Imagine, chicken can raise you from rugs to riches. At the same time, chicken can bring you from riches to rugs. How? Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Greetings to you all and welcome to today's chicken masterclass. I'm going to handle broilers, kinyeji and layers all in one course. At some point, we will drop off broilers and we proceed with the other birds. How can I become a successful chicken farmer? Or how can I start a successful chicken farm? You don't need to quit your job. And that's the reason we, AIM Agriculture, are here for you. We give you the chicken farming manual so that as you're working, you can confirm on your manual. What do you expect in your chicken at what particular time, at what particular age, so that the person on the farm cannot take you in cycles. Here we go. If you're new to our YouTube channel, kindly hit the subscribe button, like, and share. Remember to click the notification bell. Each time you upload a new video, you'll just never miss it out. Chicken farming, chicken farming, chicken farming. How? Very important. Even if you have the best structures, the best feed, the best personnel, and you have got it wrong from day one, you are done. There's nowhere you're going. How? Day one, get the right chicken. And when I say the right chicken, I mean F1 chicken, F1. And F1 are chicks that are hatched from a parent stock. And a parent stock are chicken that have got the desired characteristics. Chicken that have been bred to attain a certain goal. If it is layers, these are chicken that have been bred to bring and give us eggs right from week 16 up to week 80. And if it is broilers, these are chicken that have been bred to give us meat from day one. By the time they attain week six, they are ready. And so is the Kenyaji improved chicken. Everybody has chicks. Everybody has chicks. Everywhere I go on Facebook, on the online, everybody has chicks. And everybody has F1 chicks. Ha. Ah. Imagine you harvest your maize on the farm. Maize that is meant to make flour for animal feed or for consumption. But then, in the next season, you again take that maize that you harvested on the farm and replant. What are you going to harvest? Nothing. Imagine in breeding. How weak is, going, is that gener generation going to be? That is the same thing that happens. If you're going to get chicks that are not F1, they are an F2, F3 or F4. Every generation has the desired characteristics reduced by a certain percentage. So if the parent stock are supposed to give us eggs for two years, then the F1 chicks, which are their babies, are supposed to give us eggs for one and a half years. The disease resistance is also equally high. When you go to F2, then they're going to give us eggs just for a year or a couple of months. The mortality is very high. If you're buying 100-day-old chicks, you are not guaranteed that they'll get to lay when they're 100 or even when they're 90, 96. You might get to lay when they're only 50. You fed these other 50 chicken. They're dead. You're not able to sell them as meat. So that's a loss. So get it right. Go for F1 chicks. You get your chicks on the farm, what do you do? Before your chicks come on the farm, make sure that your brooder is ready. Where are you putting the brooder? That structure has to be clean, disinfected with the right disinfectants, and pay attention to the withdrawal period. The disinfectant has a specific withdrawal period. Like, if you disinfect today, you cannot introduce chicks to that particular unit until a certain number of days are over. Seven days, ten days, like that, like that. If you introduce chicks to this, is, is this house before those days collapse, it means that that disinfectant is still hazardous to the birds and even to you. Now, 
when your chicks have, have come, they're in the brooder. You've paid all the attention during the brooding stage. And you can also watch our brooding video in the link I've just shared below. So the chicks have gotten out of that brooding period. For how long are you going to brood them in the brooder? Chicks are supposed to be in the brooder for a month or two. Now, what feeds are you going to give your chicken and what amounts? When the chicks arrive from the first day, that is for the layers and the kenyeji improved, from day one up to day 60, the chicks are supposed to consume starter crumbs. Remember I'm saying starter crumbs. I'm not saying chick mash. Starter crumbs are good with a high digestibility. They are e easily ingested with a high FCR, a feed conversion ratio. They are quickly converted into tissue because they are somehow pre-cooked. What amount are you going to give them? Give your chicks an average of 45 grams per bud per day for the 60 days. Alternatively, when you buy your chicks, pay attention to the breed. Ask the person selling you the chicks, what breed are you selling me? So that once you get that breed, then go and get a manual for that particular breed. In that particular manual, you'll be given the number of, the amount of feed that chicken is supposed to consume per day. You need to know the vaccine program of your chicken. What vaccine? Are you supposed to vaccinate your chicken? At what age? How do I handle the vaccine? What is the amount of the vaccine? What is the quality of the vaccine? And what is the source of the vaccine that you ought to get and vaccinate your chicken? What is the procedure of vaccinations? I've shared a link below on vaccine program. But just to, to highlight, when you're vaccinating your chicken, the vaccine should not last more than two hours. It goes for more than two hours, it's no longer a vaccine. It's now the real disease. Avoid spillages as much as you can during vaccinations. If you're doing automated drinking system, don't use the automated drinking system for vaccination. That is a big no. Why? You will get the vaccine remnants in that automated drinking system and it will stay there for days and days and days. So that will be a hub for that particular disease we are vaccinating against. Be smart. Just use the normal bell uh, drinkers. Put at the right levels, the right amounts of vaccine water. The chicken can consume within the two hours. The remaining, dispose them at an incinerator or even in a sewage somewhere that can't go to the environment and even affect your neighbor's birds. Once you vaccinate your chicken right, that's one step. Right, you will minimize chances of diseases. Ha, huh, I have a farm. Mm -hmm. Hello, come and see my farm. It's over the weekend. Ah, let's go around. We see my chicken. You come around with people, your friends. You want to floss around, show them how your chicken is doing. Oh, I have this ch chicken. Oh, I'm this rich. That's the biggest blunder you're doing. That's a big blunder. Big blunder. Biosecurity is very important. Biosecurity is very, very important. Minimize on traffic in the farm. Minimize on visitors on the farm. Have a food dip at the gate or a vehicle wheel dip at the gate. When vehicles come in, let them be disinfected. When you yourself come into the farm, get disinfected. Disinfect your boots, disinfect your hands. Have the right gear to come onto the farm. This way, you vaccinated the chicken controlling diseases that will be airborne and also other sources. Then here now you control the disease coming in by touch on the body, on the clothes, on the hands, on the legs. That's a disease-free flock. You're minimizing on use of antibiotics, minimizing on use of vitamins, keeping your chicken healthy. Remember, the less of the medication you use, the healthier the liver, the fatter the pocket. And even the organic, the chicken. Our chicken are growing very well. They have been vaccinated well, they're having the right drinkers, having the right feed, having the right weight, having the right mortality. It's time for them to lay. Have the correct number of laying boxes placed at the correct places. If you have few laying boxes, you're simply increasing egg breakages. 
You are simply encouraging the chicken to lay on the floor if it's depleted. When the chicken lay on the floor, you're introducing egg eating. An egg lost is a shilling lost. Remember, they have eaten feeds to lay that particular egg. You bought the feeds with money. So we are not converting this thing to the last thing that you want. We want everything we put here, we get a shilling. So have the right number of laying boxes. An average of three birds to five birds per laying box. The laying boxes should be placed at the correct places. Away from sunlight because of a position or other laying takes place best in a dark environment. Have the laying boxes facing away from light. Have the right patches where a chicken can rest. Scientifically, it is said or it stated that when chickens patch, it encourages proper digestion to take place. Remember, when proper digestion takes place, then we got the right feed conversion ratio. We are working, we're talking about a ratio of below 0 0.02, which is the right feed conversion ratio. So then have rooters, have patches where the chicken can rest well. Our chicken are now laying. We leave now the people doing layers there. We proceed with the people doing Kinyeji improved. I'm keeping this chicken to get eggs, to put in my incubator, hatch and sell. If you're that type of farmer, then you are supposed to go for parent stock. Keep your chicken as parent stock so that you can get F1 eggs. Hatch F1 chicks. Sell out F1. How do we go about it? If I want to keep my chicken for fertile eggs, then I have to pay attention to the right ratio of cock to hen ratio. The best ratio is one cock to seven hens. This will help you have a very high percentage of fertile eggs. When these eggs are loaded into the incubator, it means that the number of eggs that will hatch into chicks is so high. What a profit, what a profit. A very few less number of eggs is going to be put to waste. We've already collected the fertile eggs. It's time now to load them in the incubator. Do, you just, do I just collect the eggs like that? Put them in the incubator like that? No, it doesn't happen like that. After collection of the fertile eggs, you'll take them to the select the grading room. The eggs are now in the selection room. Here we are looking for the normal eggs. Which eggs are we supposed to remove? The very small sized eggs, out. The oversized eggs, out. The sh sh shapeless eggs. An egg is supposed to be oval with one wide side up, another side down. If an egg is neither having a bigger size up, or a smaller size down is just uniformly sized up and down or just uniformly round that egg is separated why we don't know where the airspace is going to be after selection of the right type of eggs it's now time to load them into the setter trays and load them in the incubator after loading the eggs in the incubator follow the right temperature get the right temperature set the right humidity I've shared a link below on incubation and, uh, and, and hatchery for a number of 18 days. Day 18, get your eggs out of the setters, put them in the hatching basket, put in the hatchery. Get your chicks, vaccinate against Newcastle and Marek's disease, package them, sell and make money. By doing that, you'll be a chicken encyclopedia. See you. Cheers.